Hi, Tim. How are you today? Oh, your 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 lead ins are getting much better. You're getting close to the truth with me. You're almost up there in the Woody Page stratosphere on Around the Horn. Still got a ways to go, but clearly, clearly number two. I did pass Jay Mariotti in shows earlier this year. <laughs> so that was that was something of a triumph. Could Woody Page still take you in a fight? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I think I can move a little quicker. I okay. think I can stick and move. Okay. okay. All right. Just. Yeah, I like to see, but Reality, you couldn't. He's a powerful man. You couldn't take Tony Reality. Reality's, Reality's very. You you had him in the studio. He's very, uh, very very uh, fast twitch. He's, very he's a little, little quick for me. He's wispy. Wispy and wired. Yes. All right, Tim, that's all I needed. I appreciate you joining us. <laughs> okay, I'm glad we ran down the show. Um, we get the meet of Kimes next week. <laughs> <laughs> How is this playing locally in Dallas that Zeke gets to play Sunday night, but his status after that is in limbo? I think it's confused. I mean, I think people are obviously excited he's playing against the Giants. Uh, gives them a much better chance against their top division rival. But uh, the idea that he might disappear after that and not be seen until November – uh, is a little scary for Cowboy fans. And, you know, the, the fact that Henderson gave it the six games, fans feel like he rubber-stamped what Goodell did. Uh, but that's kind of what eventually the court is going to do the same thing. He, I think I think Zeke can win in court for a short period of time yeah. and maybe get the injunction and be able to play. But ultimately, it's going to end up the same way the Brady case did, I think. Are Dallas fans more upset with the commissioner or Ezekiel Elliott? Uh, the commissioner. Um, I, I should say there, there's some aspect of fans that read this stuff that came out over the weekend, you know, his own testimony about what he did at Ohio State and with the girl and all, and they're, they're probably a little shocked by it. But by and large, fans are upset with the commissioner, uh, with myself, with, with anybody else who isn't just staunchly in the in the category of, you know, Zeke is innocent. He was set up by this girl, and if you if you see it any other way, you're 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 naive. Wait, so they're they're angry at you with how you see this? Well, I mean, I, I think Zeke has brought a lot of these problems on himself, and, he, and you know, I can't. I've never I've never once written or said that he is guilty. I have no idea if he is. I just said there's enough there for the league to determine he was now when the league comes out over the weekend and it, you know, the, the woman who investigated, uh, Kia Roberts who investigated Tiffany Thompson apparently is not allowed to be part of the decision-making process. Yeah. That is a beyond a horrible look for the league. And that is the kind of thing that I think, you know, should be able to get it beat in court, but everybody tells us that it won't matter because the Brady case ultimately came down to, a judge saying Goodell has the right to use facts as he sees fit, uh, because this is all this all this power has been given him, and we're not going to fight that power. Do you think that the well, how's how's Jerry Jones taking this? You know, he, he's been unbelievably silent on the matter uh, in the wake of the six game suspension. Before that, he was saying there was going to be nothing. Yeah, And uh, recently he said there's going to be some good news, but I think he just meant good news like I think he thought he was going to be able to play in week one. But I think he is – I mean, this is this is not an easy match for Jerry. Jerry can overpower a lot of people. He can't overpower the commissioner in the league. And uh, I think that's frustrating for him. Is this a Super Bowl team? I mean, Harold Henderson was at his party at the Hall of Fame. That didn't go well. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> he had the corn dogs and the donuts with everybody else, and he still gave him 60 games. Uh, to answer your question, no, that's what's interesting. I think next year is a much more likely, if you think about this, they're much better getting the suspension over with now. Uh, Dak in his third year, Zeke in his third year, all these young defensive backs they drafted to replace their guys will be in their second year. Right now they're all hurt. Jalen Smith in his second year back from this monster injury i would think 2018 is their year to really make a run even you know not saying they don't have a chance this year but i think it's it'd be easier to do it next year so i would if i'm a cowboy fan i want to get this suspension over with and 
get on with Zeke's career and, and move forward because it's a good young team. He's Tim Kalashaw from Around the Horn, joining us at Dan Patrick Show. Yeah, trying to understand Ezekiel Elliott and what he'll mean on Sunday night against the Giants, and then if it's Darren McFadden uh-huh. after that, is it going to be that much of a drop-off in, in the play calling? And uh, does this now then rest with Dak Prescott if Zeke is down for six games? I think it rests with Dak like 15 to 20%. I, I don't think there's a th- – there will be a shift in the play calling, but not a lot. They, you know, Zeke, the way they used Zeke last year was he frequently would have six to eight carries in the first half, and then he'd have like 14 to 15 in the second half. And they would just, you know, open things up early, but then wear people down with Zeke in the second half. And I don't know if they can do that with Darren McFadden. I don't think they can use him to that extent. So it's going to have to be a little more Dak, but the feeling is, you know, he and he and Dez are on the same page. Dez is much healthier than he was a year ago. So I don't really think the offense, I mean, it, it's stupid to say they won't miss him. They'll miss him a little. Yeah. And it might cost them one of the six games. But trying to figure out what they're going to do on defense is still a, a bigger puzzle for this team. Would you have voted for Jerry Jones for the Hall of Fame? I would not have. I'm about the only one around here who said and wrote repeatedly, maybe that's why I wasn't at the party, uh, who said and wrote repeatedly, I think you should be in the Hall of Fame for business or something else, but they're basically, this is a bunch of people saying he made the rich guys filthy rich. I mean, that, I mean, the NFL, with the way TV has gone, we've seen it in every contract, a smaller league. These contracts were going to be enormous. Now, he helped, he helped push them toward Fox 25 years ago. Uh, and he has a beautiful stadium. Are those reasons to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame when you're the general manager of your team and you haven't done anything in 20 years? I don't know. To me, it's not. Yeah, I wouldn't have put him in the Hall of Fame. He's a great businessman. You would not. No, no, I wouldn't put him in the Hall of Fame. You know, contributions to the game. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Okay. Yeah, Robert Kraft has done more than Jerry Jones has as far as assembling a dynasty here. Jerry hasn't done it. Right. I think Jerry has gotten in the way of the Cowboys any attempts at success the last 20 years. Uh, so I, I can't give, I can't bestow him the best honor, greatest honor, when I don't think you've done a good job as an owner and a GM. Most important thing an owner does is what? Hire a GM. Hire the best GM you can. Yeah. And that's where Jerry has failed. But I wouldn't have put a lot of these guys in. I've said before, I, I wouldn't have put Eddie DeBartolo in. I mean, he hired Bill Walsh. And he avoided prison time in Louisiana. <laughs> Those are his two big contributions. <laughs> Way to go, Eddie. Yeah, but Ro- Robert Kraft, though, Hall of Famer? Just for the shirts. Just for bringing back the blue <laughs> shirt with the white collar. I mean, French cuffs. <laughs> yes. Who among us didn't have those in the 90s? Oh, I know. We still have them in our closet. Yeah, yeah. I was killing back then. Are you one around the horn today? Uh, I am not. I was uh, I was a loser yesterday, but I will be back Friday, hopefully to preview uh, Federer and Nadal because I'm the only person on the show who cares about or watches tennis. So there, I will be there Friday to set the table for that match. All right. Well, then I'm not watching around the horn until Friday. But there's there, well, I can't say there's no reason to, but you just do what you, <laughs> you just did. As you see fit. You know what? We'll edit that out. I don't want that to come back and haunt you. Yeah, uh, yeah. This this is all. This is all gonna be. Yeah, this is taped. This is so taped. Yeah, fine. yeah. Don't worry about. It. We'll yeah, edit that we're out. Good. Yeah, we, we're good. All right, uh, we're good. Tim. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. You bet, sir. That's Tim Callow show. The Dan Patrick Show weekday mornings on Audience. <laughs> 